Okay, next thing we're going to do is install the valves. Um, what I've done is we've we kept all of the lifters or tappets, whatever you want to call them, uh, we've kept them separate uh, for their each individual, where they came out of, each individual valve. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, we put assembly lube on the, on the camshaft. We're going to go ahead and put some assembly lube on each one of the lifters or tappets, like I said, whatever you want to call them. And we're going to go ahead and fit them into the block. Sorry, my hand's in the way. Just like that. I mean, they might come out some, um, but I, I like to get them in here. Just uh, the way I did my last one is I, I really just like to get them in here and, you know, that way I'm not having to deal with lots of extra parts. They're already there. Um, so there's that. And then we'll do the other two. Like I said, I've already we've already matched these up with uh, with their correct location. And one important note is, you know, I say left. I a lot of times I use the identifiers left and right um, to identify. I think I got enough on my one oh here. Don't short yourself on assembly lube. That's my philosophy because you don't want anywhere to occur at, at startup when you first start this engine. Um, and nice thing about assembly lube is it's nice and thick and, and sticky. So anyway, so now we have the lifters installed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come back and install each one of the valves. Um, we did get new valve springs um, just because... You know, the valve springs, I think, are $6.99 a piece for the B43 engines. Um, you know, if we're, we're already in here, we're already adjusting everything, you know, why not spend the, you know, 24 25 26 bucks on new valve springs when you've got other valve springs that have been in this engine for, you know, a thousand hours and, you know, you don't... I don't have a spring compressor. Now, I could probably make one. Um... But, you know, it's my philosophy, while you're in it, you might as well do the job right and not come back and have to do it another thousand hours from now, even though you probably have to rebuild the engine a thousand hours from now. But anyway, um, that's my philosophy on valve springs. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the valves in. I'll get everything set up for that, and we'll come back and we'll finish up uh, the valves. Okay, um, valves. Now, I've already practiced twice. I've got these valves in over here, so we've already got one set of valves in. Um, now what I've got, I've got the the engine set at top dead center for um, this side of the engine. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead, and this is the intake for this side of the engine, um, which I call my the left side of the engine as I sit on the tractor and look forward. Um, so I've already got assembly lube on the, the, the shaft of the valve. Um, we have our new spring right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, I'm going to take our cap to our spring, put it in here like this. Now in this case, this is one of the original B43s, so there are no seals or seals do not fit. Um, if you're not careful, this is where you can launch springs all the way across the garage, uh, putting them in there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this spring up, or line the valve up, put the valve in there, and sometimes it takes a little bit to get it lined up and get it all the way in. You just have to play around for a minute. See where you're at. Because what you want, and if can you show right here? Um, see how this valve's not all the way in? We want the valve to be all the way in, and just like that, it's just a matter. It's just a function of getting everything lined up. So now the valve's all the way in, we have to install the keepers. And so what I've got is I've got just, I took and pumped out some grease onto a, a plast, piece of plastic, got my valve spring compressor, take my valve spring compressor, load it on here. Pull back my valve spring. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take each one of these retainers, get a little bit of grease on there, make them too greasy. Your fingers are too greasy; they'll stick to you. I'm going to put, line them up in there. 
The grease helps them stick to the shaft. We're going to put the other one, sorry about my blue hand, in there. Occasionally you do drop them. And so it's really nice to have a magnet on hand if you drop them, like I just did. And just put them on there. And you can kind of see in there, and then you release the tension on the spring. And there you go. And now what we're going to do is I have the flywheel bolt installed. And so we're just going to go ahead and turn the engine over by hand. And we see that our valve works. And what we're going to do next is we're going to install the exhaust. Exhaust goes in the same exact way. Um, they, they all go in the same way. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set the um, lash on the valves. So uh, that'll be the next step. Okay, now that um, we have the valves in, uh, we're going to adjust the valves. And I've already made kind of one video of this, but I figured I'd do it again and put it in this rebuild. Um, so we've got our new springs in here, and we've got our, our tappets or lifters in. Um, for the intake, our clearance, our valve lash between the, the tappet and the... the the valve itself is 0 .005, so that's our feeler gauge right there. We're gonna put it in there, and it's a little it's a little loose. And now the the place of the engine is very important here. It's supposed to be at top dead center, um, and so if it's not at top dead center, and the valves are supposed to be closed per the book, so the valves have to be closed, and the engine should be at top dead center to take these measurements. Um, so anyway, our clearance is supposed to be 0 .005. It's a little big, so what we've got is what we need is we've got a, a 9 16 and a 7 16 inch wrench. Um, the 9 16 goes on the tappet, or the, the back of the tappet close to the block, and the 7 16 goes towards the front. And what we're going to do is we're just going to close this up just a, a little bit and see what we end up with. And I think I closed it up a little too much. Yep. So a little movement goes a long way in this case. Um, as observed, you saw how much the wrench moved in that case. So now we're we're right at 0 0.005. Um, try to close it back up just a little bit. There's not good drag on the on the uh, feeler gauge. So we'll go ahead and go to 0 .004. See, you know, we got a little bit, little bit of space there, and um, we'll go ahead and go to 0 .006 and see if it's too big. And 0 .006 is too big, so uh, we know that our intake set at 0 .005, and that's what we want. Now our exhaust needs to be set at 0 .013. Uh, so we'll get the 0 .013 feeler gauge out. Make sure you only have one feeler gauge. And it's just a little tight right there. So we're going to open it up some more. Not quite. Mm, there's a little too much drag in that case, so we'll open it up just to fuzz more. This is one of those things that that's got it's got some nice drag on it now. We'll just go ahead and step up to point zero zero or zero one four and see what happens. So there's point zero one four, and that doesn't fit. So we know that we have a our feeler gauges are in, our valves are in spec. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn the engine over a couple times. Um, as I've done a couple other times, I'm just going to turn it all over, let all the valves work. And then once we've turned it over a couple times, Top dead center. 
we're going to check this side again. 0 0.013 on the exhaust. Yep. And then 0 0.005 on the intake. Yep. Good. Nice. Good. Uh, uh, kind of grabbing the feeler gauge. Then we're going to spin it over one more time. We're going to measure these over here. So we've got our intake, 0 0.005. Yep, nice drag. And then our exhaust is 0 0.013. And I say all these numbers repeatedly because that's the only way I can remember them. And actually, it seems like our exhaust is a little loose, but we'll go ahead and step it up to 0 0.014. We'll go ahead and tighten the exhaust up just to fuzz, just to make sure. It seems it seems to be right on the edge. Um, so we'll go ahead and try it out again. There's point zero one three. Go ahead and zero and four. Yeah. So um, that's how you do the valves or the valve lash. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put we'll put the plate up here on the front of the camshaft and put the valve covers in, and then we can start attaching everything to the outside of the engine.